Um, my name is, is Susan Armbruster. I'm the Director of Business Development for uh, Crossings. We have a, a number of folks from our team on the phone. Um, Dr. Reddy Yoruba, who is our Assistant Chief Medical Information Officer, and he'll be, he'll be completing the demonstration of the tool today. We have Dr. Lotan, who is our Chief Medical Information Officer. Uh, Kristen Medeiros, who's our Senior Application Analyst, and myself, Susan Armbruster, the Director of Business Development. So thank you all for joining us today. I'm going to um, just share a little bit of information about Crossings before we jump into the demo of the Opioid Advisor. Um, Crossings is, is actually a subsidiary of Universal Health Services, or UHS, as we refer to it. Um, we are headquartered in King of Prussia, just outside of Philadelphia. And UHS is uh, a client of Cerner, much like all of you are here that are joining us today. And we use um, the Cerner EMR across our 26 inpatient acute care facilities across the United States. Um, in our use of the, of the Cerner platform, we saw a need and, and um, a need for expedited development of, of a lot of things that we felt like we needed to, to spend some time on in order to address concerns in our organizations about um, the Cerner platform and, and what they had available today. And with those, some of, with those needs, we developed a number of different software modules and components um, that we've made available in our catalog via the, the avenue of Crossings, which is the, the group that is here joining us today. So. Um, Crossings, we, we follow Cerner best practices for MPage development. Um, given that we're a, a client of Cerner, we understand that, that that's an important piece of this. And um, we follow the best practices for the development and implementation with the support of, of Cerner. Um, here's a look at our, our client base across the United States. Um, we are, we're concentrated in several areas and, and kind of move from, from east to west across the United States. We'll be adding a, a couple of green dots here in the near future with our recent conversions of, of a couple of different tools at Einstein Health in Philadelphia as well as Bay State Health in Massachusetts. Um, we've created uh, all of the tools in our catalog uh, with our clinical informatics team, um, which includes four full-time physicians, 10 nurse informaticists, um, over 15 FTEs that are, are dedicated to full-time custom development, and we're supported by over 100 full-time UHS staff that, that are dedicated to Cerner. As I mentioned, we leverage the MPage Development Toolkit and Cerner Best Practices to create all of these enhancements for the physician and nursing workflows, and, and we're proud to say that we've been recognized with uh, innovation awards from, from several different organizations, including Cerner and HIMSS and other industry public, publications. Um, in addition to the, the actual software that, that we make available to, to other Cerner clients, we also um, offer the implementation services for the software modules to include the design and build and implementation as well as the, the training um, and support for these, these modules after, after you've gone live. Um, we, we offer the services to maintain and troubleshoot and resolve issues, that, any issues that you may see with our, with our different components. Um, and will support you during upgrades or changes to your, to your Cerner um, levels of code um, as we, we face those, those similar challenges in our environment. Um, we've, we've developed a, a number of tools in our catalog. This is a, a snapshot of the, the, some of the av available modules that we have um, for the physician workflow on the inpatient side. Um, you can also go out to our website to, to see short videos on, on a number of these tools and, and receive more information about those. We've also developed uh, a number of software modules um, focused for physicians on the ambulatory side. And here's a, a snapshot of a few of those. Um, and we've also developed a, a number of modules um, that, are, that are focused towards nursing. Um, and again, all of these are, are out on our website where you can see more information or certainly reach out to me if there's any that, that catch your eye and, and maybe potential challenges at your own organizations. 
Um, and finally, we've developed some software modules and tools uh, focused on the IS and departmental areas of, the, of your organizations. And here's a, a look at a few of those. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Dr. Reddy. He is going to talk a little bit about the, the background of the opioid advisor, and then, and then we'll share the tool with you. So Dr. Reddy, I'll, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Susan. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I just would like to start with a brief introduction on, on the need, the why factor, why we build the opioid advisor, and what we try to achieve uh, with the advisor. Uh, so uh, I, when I say opioid advisor, I think it's a little misleading. It's actually uh, we are trying to the end users for these opioid advisor from uh, UHS perspective is the uh, Florida hospitals because we have a certain a few hospitals in Florida and um, Florida came up with the state law in and in started uh, mandating it July first, two thousand eighteen. And our goal, and we received a panic um, request from our Florida hospitals wanting to make sure that our physicians are compliant with the uh, prescribing regulation from the Florida state. And as a result of that, we wanted to make sure we leverage our CDS and built an advisor, which is minimally intrusive to the physician, and yet uh, we capture 100% compliance uh, with the Florida state law. So that was our goal. So we started this project um, just two months before the Florida state law, because I think the law was not finalized until the last moment. Uh, so we had two months to build this, and we went live uh, July 1st of uh, 2018, the day the law became effective. And since then, uh, we have had 100% compliance uh, with the state law, and uh, we haven't had any pushback uh, from our physicians or any, we haven't heard any complaints uh, from, our, from our physicians, which leads us to believe uh, it has been minimally intrusive uh, from their perspective. I just want to highlight the Florida state law um, and the things that we included in our advisor. Uh, so I think the state law uh, categorizes pain into acute pain, uh, a non-acute pain, and uh, which is, again, also chronic pain. Uh, for the acute pain, I think the limitation was that a prescriber was not allowed to prescribe more than three days uh, of opioids. And also, the provider was uh, supposed to make sure that um, there's a documentation of the medical necessity in the, in the EMR uh, when any opioid is being prescribed. Um, the law gives a little exemption on the acute pain. Um, you could certainly prescribe greater than three days, but uh, those patients uh, are, should have had um, a traumatic brain injury with a score of uh, greater than nine um, and then when you're choosing non-acute pain and um, you also have to give an opioid anticholinistic along with uh, the opioid prescription. And then finally, chronic pain. I think uh, if you categorize pain as chronic, it allows you to prescribe um, uh, opioids for, uh, without any limitations on the duration. And then it says that a reassessment is needed in every, th uh, every three months. Uh, apart from this, as you are all aware, there should be a patient contract, uh, and there should be uh, access to a prescription drug monitoring program uh, for each state, um, which we all, uh, which we try to accomplish using our advisor. So these are the things we try to achieve. I'll uh, actually go ahead and do a live demo. Uh, any questions on the OPI law so far? Yeah. So I have a test patient in one of our domains. I'm going to go ahead and first place an order for an inpatient oxycodone. Um, Dr. Reddy, can you go ahead and share your screen? I just passed the presenter rights to you. Oh, okay. God, sorry. Can everyone see my screen? Yes, I think so. I can. Okay. Okay. So, um, so we uh, fire the advisor only for uh, prescriptions and not for inpatient med medications. So, 
Well, I'll first try to place an order for an inpatient medication and show you that uh, it does recognize that uh, this is an inpatient med and allows the user to proceed without firing the advisor. Um, so if you notice, you did not get any alert or any um, advisor when you try to place an order for an inpatient prescription. So let me go ahead and place a prescription <clears throat> for the same oxycodone. So we have order sentences to align with the state law so we so that they can pick three days, seven days, uh, just trying to limit the number of days by order sentences. So say, for example, I pick a three days. Since this is a prescription, you have the alert firing and the advisor. Um, we have patient demographics on the top. You have the prescription information, which we carry forward into the advisor. Um, since this is a test domain, I don't have the most recent version. You also have a PDMP link for the state EFOS, which the user can click on and access to uh, prior to prescribing opioids. Uh, so we have that link available from within the window. And since uh, I pull forward the information of the duration into the advisor, say, for example, I change this to seven days, I'm, I mean, the advisor allows you to change the duration here because sometimes we change our minds um, after we order it and we didn't want them to be going back uh, to the orders tab to be able to change or modify a prescription. So we do allow the user to be able to modify the prescription. And we have two required fields, type of pain and opioid reason. The reason we have these as required is the Florida state law mandates that even though you have a diagnosis, you do need to uh, give a category of pain which you are prescribing, and that information should be on the prescription. So that's why we ask the user to select if this is uh, if the prescription is being prescribed for acute pain, acute pain exception, or a non-acute pain. Say, for example, I'm trying to prescribe seven days for an acute pain, which goes against the state law. And once I give a reason, if I proceed, I get an alert saying acute pain is not allowed with a duration of greater than three days. So that provides guidance uh, even for users who are not aware of the state law. Uh, so it forces me to go back and change this to either three days or select a non-acute pain. So let me go ahead and select the three days here. And then if you notice in the state law, it also says that if I'm choosing an acute pain exception, I do need uh, to give uh, opioid antagonistics. So we do have a prescriptions here where the user can select the naloxone um, or any other opioid antagonistic which uh, your site prefers to have. Um, so if I choose acute pain exception, we automatically generate that prescription. So if you notice, it goes from not needed to automatically an injectable solution. Um, so we automatically create a second prescription to be compliant with the state law and also allow the user to prescribe this with one click. <clears throat> Any questions on this functionality so far? So I'm going to proceed with uh, choosing acute pain exception and choosing a reason of cancer and then uh, choosing naloxone because this is since it's required with the state law. So I'll go ahead and proceed. Now, since it's a PR and prescription, we do not default the duration, uh, the dispense quantity, so the user is still forced to pick a dispense quantity. Uh, for three days, uh, if I choose nine capsules, and I'll go ahead and sign. Now, if you go back to the prescription itself, <laughs> Just bring it up. So we have two special fields which we added to the prescription, which the advisor adds on the fly. Um, 
So you have a one is a pain category. So it's somewhere type of therapy, uh, it says acute. So this field um, gets transferred to the prescription, whether you're prescribing um, as a printed format or whether even when you're e-prescribing uh, using dual authentication, it does allow you to uh, transmit this information on the prescription to the pharmacy. The second um, field is the opioid reason. Uh, this field does not get transmitted to the pharmacy because the requirement is for this field to be uh, documented in the patient's record. So if you have any audits, uh, whether, you have been, whether your hospital has been compliant with the state law, uh, you can always go back to the prescription order in EMR in Cerner and be able to look at the opioid reason, uh, the documented reason for that prescription. So that's essentially what the uh, op Florida Opioid Advisor does. Um, I'll pause here and see if you have any questions. Hey, Ricky, can you hear me? Yes, yeah, sorry. If you change the, uh, you started by ordering the prescription. Um, if you if you change something on the advisor, does it write back to the prescription? Yes, it does. So um, I could. Sorry. If I change this to seven days and choose non-acute pain, we default the duration as seven days. And then, um, so you do have the option to be able to change that um, on the advisor itself. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Yes, this is Carolyn from Alabama. Can you also prescribe um, like patches or IV medications? So yes, you can prescribe a patch for the IV medications. Uh, typically, you don't give prescriptions because this is this um, the CDS and the advisor is purely for prescriptions. So any prescription, any opioid prescription, you will be able to uh, leverage the advisor. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. You're welcome. And this can be customized for different states. I mean, right now our need uh, from a regulatory perspective was for Florida because that's the first state which went live with these strict guidelines uh, and defined regulations. So we built it, but we have the platform to be able to modify this um, um, for each state's need uh, because we do um, – expect other states to start mandating uh, different guidelines. Um, and since it's not federally regulated uh, and it's based on each state's um, law. <clears throat> Any other questions? Thank you, guys. Um, if you have any further questions that you can think of later, please uh, feel free to email Susan, and uh, and she will, and I'll be glad to respond back um, if you have any questions or any other concerns. All right. Thank you, Dr. Reddy. We appreciate that that demonstration. Um, as he mentioned, yes, please. Please filter any questions that you have um, for me or if you'd like any further information on this tool, and I'd be happy to get that for you. I'll also be uh, sending out a link to this webinar. If there's anyone from your organization that wasn't able to join us today, um, you, can, you can certainly pass along the link to this webinar, and um, they'll be able to view it at a time that's convenient for them. We thank you all for joining us. Thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye.